Hey, what's going on everyone? Um, we're back on the Soul Factory. Welcome to the Soul Factory. Um, it's been it's been a while. This was supposed to happen like two weeks ago, but we had uh, some issues getting a guest, but we're finally here. Um, as you can see from the stream title, you already know who um, the next guest is. He's a two-time Tekken World Tour finalist, uh, likely to be a three-time Tekken World Tour finalist now. I think the points are looking at the moment. Uh, reigning champion of... Um, Clash of the Olympians, um, and it's you know arguably the best player in Europe right now. It's uh, crazy esports super Kuma. Welcome to the stream. Bienvenue. Merci, merci. Um, so before we start, just uh, a little housekeeping. Um, those of you who are watching this in Kenya, uh, registration for the Tekken 254 circuit is um, up right now. Um, if you want to check that out, uh, exclamation mark circuit in the chat. Um, we're starting a new circuit for MK11 as well. Uh, there's a full season discount going for just, at the, just as there was at the start of this season. So if you want to check that out, uh, use the chat. Uh, and secondly, our, top, our community's top player, um, Mickey, is heading to Rocks and Roll Dubai in about a week and a half, maybe a week, I'm not sure. Uh, but he needs a little boost with his budget, so the rest of us are trying to chip in. If you want to support him, exclamation mark, donate in the chat. Um, and yeah, African Tekken is on the rise and we want to see more and more of our players go to these international majors and test ourselves. So yeah, that's out of the way. Super Kuma again, thank you for taking the time. Um, I know you have a uh, Takra Cup coming up this week, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah. How's the preparation for that going? I'm sure it's there's a bunch of monsters you're expecting at that tournament. Uh, I'll be honest, I'm not really preparing too much for the tournament like i'm going there to prepare for finals uh, i'm not really preparing for it this is going to be the training all right that makes sense that makes sense um so i wanted to make something clear before we start uh in the you quoted the tweet that was announcing this stream yesterday and i saw a reply um on that tweet from someone who was saying um uh, basically one of the, on that tweet one of the things Obviously, I said one of the things we're going to talk about is your thoughts on Akuma and Tekken 7. Yeah, and that reply was like, um, talking about his thoughts on Akuma, like it's the latest scandal, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, I'm not here to have a debate with you. I'm not here to tell you why Akuma is broken or any of that stuff. That's what Twitter is for. That's what Reddit is for. Like, yeah. I'm just here to find out more about you as a player and uh, hopefully get some info that's going to help other players and inspire other players. Of course, we're going to talk about Akuma. And, and I know as an Akuma main, you've talked about him a lot. Uh, but some of the guys in our community might not have heard what you have to say. So I don't think it hurts um, to yeah, sort of, that, yeah. That's, that's what I replied to that reply. Yeah, is, yeah. Thanks to this interview, I can reach, uh, I can reach people I don't normally get to connect with. Yeah. So even if I've said all this a, a lot, I haven't said it to everyone yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, so it's I, nice. yeah. So it, it, as I was gonna say, it, it, it doesn't hurt to to repeat that information because ultimately you you're still helping some people if you know what I mean. Um, but before, uh, obviously, I'm gonna be asking you about your competitive career. But before we go into that, um, I wanted to go back to the beginning, um, sort of when you first started playing. When when did you first start? Uh, playing fighting games what was the first game you played um, when did that all begin so yeah uh, I think it probably all started with uh, Tekken 3 mm -hmm. I was like five six years old <coughs> playing with my friends you know and ever since then I've just bought every Tekken game that's come out and um, Around when uh, Street Fighter 4 and Marvel were big back in the day, I was watching Evos and everything. Mm -hmm. I thought, wow, well, fighting games are actually more than what I thought, even though I did enjoy them before. Yeah. And I thought, well, I'm going to try actually learn how to play. Mm. I, I didn't really. But then Tekken Tag 2 came out, mm -hmm. and I thought, okay, this time I'm actually learning how to play. And yeah. I did. Yeah. And, and that's I was... how I got into the competitive part. I was actually going to get to that, but it's it's, it's nice you yeah. said that. Um, but in, in what game is it when you started playing Akuma in particular? Because I would assume because of your name and meaning him in Tekken 7, you probably had some previous... You mentioned Street no. Fighter 4. 
Did you play a cool main Street Fighter Four or any previous I, game? I didn't. <laughs> Tekken Seven. No. Is that is that any? Yeah, I play, I played a cool main Tekken Seven. Really? Yeah, like uh, I I've I've said this story before, but like my my name, I'm not named after the character Akuma. Oh really? Like it's it's a dumb story, but I there's a Dragon Ball parody on YouTube, mm -hmm. uh, and the big fat Namekian on on the on Namek mm -hmm. that unlocks Gohan's potential. Mm -hmm. They call him Super Kami Guru. Mm -hmm. and at the same time I was watching that, I needed to make a new PSN account. So I typed in Super Kami, and that was taken. Mm -hmm. So I thought, what well, sounds sort of similar to that? And it just landed on Super Akuma. Really? Yeah, and then it just, I just got lucky that Akuma just fits me so well. <laughs> That's like the most random story I've heard for like someone picking a game at all. That's actually pretty interesting. Um, so you mentioned uh, st starting your competitive journey with Tag 2. Um, what was your first? What was your first tournament like, and what is it that made you want to improve and keep going to tournaments? What sparked that? Yes, well, to be honest, it's just like we have a very strong community. What it, it was stronger in tag two than it is now, I'd have to say, which is kind of sad. But let's not get into that right now. Mm -hmm. And we had very like tag two. The the game wasn't doing very well, so we really had to stick together and teach new players. And there was a, an overwhelming feeling of, I was welcome there. Right? Mm -hmm. People wanted to show me the ropes. People wanted wanted to grow the community. And like, the guy that was probably the best in uh, in Marseille. He was one of the best in France overall. Mm -hmm. He just like took me under his wing and like taught me how to play and made me stick to the game, mm -hmm. which which was great. I just. just uh, I, I don't exactly remember my first tournament, but basically the first time I went to a Tekken tournament, it was like a multi-game thing, and mm -hmm. Tekken wasn't there. I just turned up, it, it, Tekken was advertised, mm -hmm. it wasn't there. Oh, that's that's the guy running the because yeah, basically they were still on the on the poster, but they hadn't been running the Tekken part of it for months, apparently. Oh, okay. But the organizer, the organizer, <laughs> he called the two players from the community said, oh, there's a Tekken player for you, come get him. Mm -hmm. And they just like, just hopped in their car and quickly r drove, because yeah, the game was on life support. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, oh, that's man, true, yeah. We have all these sessions and we have all these tournaments, like you should come, and like, just give us your number, whatever, we'll call you. Uh, we got a gathering this weekend, or next weekend or whatever. And we just met up for a big session. It was, uh, it was really cool, and then they said, in two weeks, we have our monthly tournament, and and you should come. So it just great. so it just snowballed from there. It started with like a session uh, amongst yeah. friends, and and it just snowballed from there. That's actually uh, pretty cool. That's yeah. how it starts for most people, I think. Um, mm. So over the years, um, we know France has produced like a bunch of uh, pretty strong fighting game players, a few legends in the FGC, like Luffy. Kayan, mm -hmm. um, the French scene has strong Tekken players now besides yourself, Doug from Paris, Guni, Kalak, and even outside Tekken, mm -hmm. you can talk about players like Akainu from Street Fighter, Kiev, uh, who plays mm -hmm. Soul Calibur. So the, the France has a pretty uh, active FGC, uh, at least from the outside looking in, that's what the way it seems. Um, so coming mm -hmm. up, are there any players in France or beyond that you looked up to or are there any players that you look up to now? Uh, in France. In France or outside? Uh, well, in France, when, when I started, I, I looked up to the guy who was teaching me how to play. Because mm -hmm. he, was, he was winning tournaments left, right and center. He was doing well. He was showing me like the... He was grinding and you could see the effort and the progress. And I wanted to be like that. What was his name? It was Daiten Jin. Daiten... Oh, I've heard of him. I've heard of him. I've heard of him. Yeah, Daiten yeah. Jin. Okay. Um, anyone mm. outside France? And I, w I didn't. It, we didn't really see much past that, apart from the Koreans. Like, it was JDCR basically in mm. Tag Two. Mm. I played Armor King also, so that helped. Just thinking, oh wow, he's the best Armor King. I want to be like that. Oh yeah, uh, that makes also, sense. Also, like yeah. help me from Korea, and I watched a lot of uh, Fighting GM when he was playing League. Mm. 
Oh yeah, he played Lee and Armor King in tag too. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, fighting GM, fighting GM is still a sick player actually. So Diet Engine, yeah, yeah. so so Diet, so coming up, Diet Engine was like sort of your mentor. He was the one that was showing you the ropes, taking yeah, you to tournaments, that sort of stuff. That's actually pretty interesting. I asked, mm-hmm. I asked about, I asked Karoko, um about mentorship in a interview he did like two months ago, and she's like. It, it can help. It can help some players because maybe for some people it's hard to get into the FGC tournaments. Can be intimidating, that sort of stuff. Um, so I, I, in in that sense, I guess uh, mentorship would help some people. I assume it helped you in that way as well. Um, I like. I don't think I needed a mentor to 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 keep doing it, mm-hmm. but it definitely helped and made me grow much faster. It's basically like. We ha- we have this uh, we have this uh, system right, where every month we'd have a tournament mm-hmm. and we'd gather points and at, at the end of the year we'd say okay that's the current ranking of everyone mm-hmm. basically every tournament ended up the same for years right? yeah. you could tell which player was going to be where then mm-hmm. I came along and I had a lot of help from the top guy mm-hmm. and month after month I was slowly slowly climbing ranks mm-hmm. until maybe like two years, two and a half years later, I was top three most of the time. Right? Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, without a mentor, I, w- I wouldn't have grown that fast. Oh, without that someone m- showing me how to get better. That makes sense. Helping practice, you know. That makes a lot of sense. Um, so the, the European Tekken scene as a whole, not just France has been, not just France, has been uh, growing and establishing itself competitively in recent years. I already mentioned some of the top players in France. Uh, across the rest mm-hmm. of the continent, there's Kuiper, Sam, Kane and Trench, Kiwis, Safi Black, Gelanda, all these guys, like the list could go on and on. We have a lot of, good, yeah. we have a lot of top players in yeah. Europe. Yeah, yeah so what, what would you say has helped the most with, the gro- with this growth? Is it more activity at the grassroots level, like more locals, more offline sessions, or... Is it something else that, that, that sort of no, sparked the competitiveness? It's the Tekken World Tour. Mm. Like having just so many big tournaments. Because the thing is, we think, we think of Europe the same way we think of America. Right? Mm. It's actually a lot cheaper and easier to travel within Europe. Mm. Right? It, like, to get from the East Coast to the West Coast in America is about $400. Mm. You can you can get trips from fr- I can drive to Italy I can drive to Spain. Mm. It can cost it can cost me fifty euros there and back to go to England. Mm. So having tournaments everywhere in Europe, it's like having a big a giant locals every month, mm. and it's helped a lot. And now with the new dojo system, it's helped the grassroots level grow quicker. Because mm. from the big tournaments, people are like, oh, I want to host something like that and do small small events. Yeah. But now that there's sort of um, an extra incentive to attend those local events, yeah. it's helped them grow a lot. Yeah, that makes Even okay. though they, they were already there, but mm-hmm. now it's easier for them to get bigger since the game is bigger, mm. it's more interest in it, and the World Tour support. Mm. Yeah, because with all with all the glitz and the glamour of, of the world tour, and and obviously with everyone yeah. watching, there's there's that added incentive, right? Um, yeah, because even if it's a sixteen man dojo and you get like twenty five points, hmm. and like someone wants to turn up, place top eight, and go, oh, I got one, I got one point, I got my first second world tour point. Hmm. It, in the grand scheme of things, it might not mean much, but hmm. it it feels good. Yeah, and yeah. People enjoy it yeah you feel proud because you see your name on like the tech and auto are standing it's like yes i yeah. i did something yeah yeah it makes sense um and in all okay. this excuse me two seconds that's all right um yeah, excuse me sorry i'm done that's that's all right yeah that's all right um and i, I was going i was just going to say um, with these, with a lot of these Euro- <coughs> European events, the French scene in particular, these, um, there seems to be a lot of support from the grassroots as well. Like when you, when people, when players like yourself do well, you see guys like Yuki screaming in the background and the Twitch chat is like, ah, Yuki, il sert à rien, qu'est-ce qu'il fait là? Ah, 
all that sort of stuff, you know. Yeah. Um, like, has there has there always been this much support from the community at large for the top players, or is it only picking up recently because uh, because of the World Tour and because of this because the game's getting bigger? Uh, I'd say the the World Tour has helped it he elevate it to a bigger <laughs> scale because mm. before it wasn't really the countrymen; it was more from the cities. Yeah, like people from Marseille would cheer cheer for Dighton. People from Paris would cheer for J Mike, uh, Ivoro, mm. and people like that. Right mm. now that every everything scaled up, so as the fans, like, mm. you get more support from everywhere in France if you're a French top player. Mm. You you did used to get some before if you went abroad, which didn't happen a lot. But mm. now you get a lot more. Mm. Okay. Is it the, the war tomes just made it's, everything bigger? It's just blown everything up. Like there's yeah. uh, people coming out from all corners of the world, and and it's it's just really nice to see. Um, yeah. So uh, before we get into Akum, I wanted to ask you one other thing. Um, most of us know by now that simply being good at Tekken or whatever you do for that matter isn't enough if you want to build a name for yourself or you want to build a brand, as people say. Like you have to make. Yeah use of social media and that ties into the the rise of the fgc and esports as a whole if you want to get me, more people playing video games and talking about them if you want more people to get uh, to play fighting games and talking about them part of the equation is growing your following and uh get, having more people to reach basically more people to preach the good word of fighting games to it in that yeah. sense at least that's the way i see it personally so it's it's um I assume that's something you're conscious about because you've been streaming a lot recently. Is that something you're actively working on or do you just wake up in the morning and be like, just backdash? <laughs> right, uh, yeah, like building a brand is very important. You can, you can win tournaments and get a following. Yeah. But you need, to, um, you need to push on that following to get it bigger. Basically, FGC... It's about results and glory and all that, and it, and it's nice. Mm. Esports is about numbers. Mm. It, it just is, and I I have no problem with that. Mm. I I'm not fake on my social media, but I do try to stay active on it. Mm. I'd let people into my head, and people support me. People enjoy it. Mm. Like before before when I didn't have a fan base, I I wasn't posting as much. Right? Mm. Now that I have people who listen. I want to post mm. and more people want to listen and even people who want to talk shit it still brings me publicity yeah yeah exactly yeah now, i don't mind you're making me stronger yeah any publicity is good publicity yeah yeah because in in the end as long as you can get a good balance between staying true to the game as in the fgc mm. and mm. growing a brand and a following and being able to bank on that yeah that's the esports side of things as long as you can keep both in line you can do well because mm. like you can people can grow a brand without results yeah. and people can have results without growing a brand yeah if you want to be successful you need to be able to do both and mm. that's and i'm trying to work actively on that yeah and because i think that you mentioned kiane right yeah yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be honest, I don't particularly want to be a player for all my life like Ni or Kudans, right? Mm. That would be nice. I, I, I'm not saying that wouldn't, right? Mm. But my actual goal is to be more like Kiyane. Mm. Have a brand, have a following, and get a job in the industry. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, that's, and that's I, think, I, I think I think that's something a lot of people forget. Like, it's... A lot of people talk about wanting to grow the FGC and wanting to get more people into video games, but um, they forget that getting good results in tournaments isn't enough. Like, like tournaments happen once a month, once every two months, blah, 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 and that's it. People are going to forget who you are for like the next month, two months. Um, but if you have, having that social media is important if you want to help people grow and you want to help grow the scene as well. Yeah. So it, and, and yeah, and it, 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 growing yourself will end up growing the scene because people outside of the scene will hear you yeah i've heard, i've heard like many people have told me like they've dm me and i always try to to reply to the end right and they were always telling me oh i got into tekken because i saw your match against so and so and it was 
Like, it was so cool. It was such a hype match. And I want to play Akuma now. Or mm. Just Tekken in general. Some some don't even pick up Akuma. But they they saw the passion and the skill and the game from my perspective and enjoyed it. Yeah. And they thought they'd get into it. Yeah. And that... growing your brand and your visibility will end up helping everyone. Yeah. Personalities in the community are very important. Mm. Even commentators, right? Mm. Like Spag gets a good following and he helps people get into the game. Yeah. Even without any results because he's a commentator. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Personalities a lot of... roll the scene. Yeah. All right. So um, we're going to get into Akuma now because I, I feel like, oh, well, not I feel like, I know that's uh, been, been a huge talking point at least since uh, yeah. season three. Uh, it's weird because Akuma's been in Tekken 7 for more than three years now since uh, FR on the arcades. And he's been the same for the most part since the console release. Obviously, he got nerfed before the console yeah. release. A bunch of his specials got their damage nerfed. He, he, he um, got nerfed 10 times in the arcades. Really? 10 times? Uh, some, something like that. He, he was completely broken. Like, people think he's broken now. Like... Just Van give me the arcade version and let me <laughs> win everything. Uh, <laughs> Vanilla Akuma was was a different story. Dumb. So dumb. So like it's yeah. So it's it's interesting that people only seem to be discovering his full potential in season three, and it's even more weird mm. that players like you have made TWT finals mm. for two years straight, and people have still largely ignored the character mm. at least until now. So why why exactly do you think that is? What what are your thoughts on that? Uh, well, p people need something to complain about. Mm. Season two, people complained about Steve. People complained about Kazumi. People complained about Geese. And they all got relatively nerfed. And Geese, three. they made... They, they nerfed all his fundamentals, but they made him crazy. Yeah. A, Geese is a bit of a weird case. Mm. Kazumi, she's still very good, but she got some of her stuff nerfed. Steve, still a very good character, but now now he's a lot more honest, I'd say. Right? Yeah. But Akuma, who wasn't top five, right? He wasn't in the top five most complained about characters, because you didn't see him a lot. Right? Yeah, yeah. There's just a f not a lot of players playing him, but they were, they were making results, right? Mm. But there wasn't enough. Yeah. But now that everyone else got nerfed, who's on the bottom? Who's just under? Who was just under Geese being complained about? It was Akuma. Yeah. Now that Geese is lower, he's top of the list for people to complain about it. Mm. And since everyone's complaining about it, everyone's hearing about it. Like, ah, oh, is he that cheap? Ah, oh, I'll try it. Yeah. And go ahead. Yeah. Do you think? Do you think um, part of part of it has to do with? the rise of the Pakistani scene. Obviously, Pakistan has a wise honey and a teeth butt who both play Akuma, both very mm. good players. Um, do you In think... Pakistan, everyone has a pocket Akuma. I just, I just want to throw it out there. From what <laughs> I've heard, everyone plays Akuma in Pakistan. All right, so, yeah. So, do you think do you think that has anything to do with it? Because they've been getting such good results with Akuma. They're like... Um, the same way people were talking about Steve, Kazumi, and Geese because they saw those characters in Top 8 all the time. Is it now... Um, like okay, Akuma's winning every tournament. Like he's broken now. Is that is that is that is yeah? That it 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 helps a lot. The, like the, the people seeing seeing the character win really does make a difference. But when I won Clash of the Olympians, first mm. tournament of season three, right? People were like, oh, see, he's winning. There was two Akumas in top eight. Mm. Like, there were six Steves in top eight at Evo last year. <laughs> just just saying, but that. Whatever. When I won Clash of the Olympians, I oh, see Akuma's so cheap, he beat John Ding. I've been winning tournaments and getting grand finals For years, since 2017. Yeah. Yeah. This isn't new. Yeah. The character wasn't particularly buffed in season three. Yeah. He, he got some slight buffs, but nothing substantial. Right? Yeah. But I won, and people saw it at the moment people were complaining. People mm. were complaining about Akuma, mm. and I won at that moment. Yeah, the, just the timing of my win, and Kuiper wrecking everyone as well at the same time. Yeah, they saw that tournament with so many Akumas. As they were complaining, it just multiplied it. Mm. 
mm. just the timing of it made it worse just amplified amplified all the complaining basically yeah, yeah. but like even Arada got pissed on Twitter because he's tired of hearing Akuma's too strong. Mm. And it's not the players. Like, people say we're undeserving, we're playing a character that's so broken you shouldn't be in the game. Yeah. But why does Ani beat Nobi using Negan? <laughs> the player is good. Yeah, sure, the exactly, yes. I'm not, I'm not arguing the character's not the best. He might mm. be, mm. right? Mm. But he beat him with... He beat the, one of the best players in Japan... With Negan. With Negan, it proves yeah. that the guy is just good at the game. Yeah. One, because he outplayed his opponent. Mm. Even if the character is is stupid, the player is amazing. And yeah. that's why he won. He didn't win because of the character. He won he because won he's got skill, yeah. Yeah. And now, I don't want to brag, but I believe that's why I'm winning. No, it's I've true. It's completely so true. It's completely true. I, I've, yeah. I've been con And I've been consistent since yeah. I started in Tekken 7. Yeah. That's the thing. It's not like, oh, I won a tournament suddenly, right? I've been in grand finals. I've been winning. I've been in top eights at least. My worst result was top 24 at a master. Mm. Everything else, more or less, I've been in top eights or just outside. And again, I, I won a few. Yeah, but yeah. But people are just seeing it now and acting like... I'm new to the scene. I'm not. I've been playing the character for so long yeah. and doing well for so long. It's just you weren't watching. Exactly, yeah. People are, are accusing me of picking up the character now. <laughs> no. He's been playing the character for years. <laughs> he was my main since the trailer dropped. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Right, yeah, so it's just people like complaining. That's it. Yeah, I think I think that's something we've all come to realize at this point, and you just brush mm -hmm. it off and you move on. Um, yeah. Um, so I wanted to talk about the matchup a little bit. Um, I think uh, a lot of the powerful stuff he has like can't really be helped because you have to stay out of range or make hard reads to get around them, like down two, down three, that sort of stuff. Yeah. But a lot of people really struggle with the demon flip, and at some point I. Uh, I was going to ask you basically, what do, what would you say is the best way to deal with that? Because at some point, I remember you saying something like sidestep left block. Um, that's the best situ yeah. situation you can put yourself in. Is there is 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 anything different now? Would you say that's the same? It's the same thing now. Like just if you want the safest, most consistent option, just sidestep and block the demon flip. You're not punishing it, mm. but you're not getting hit. And honestly, if you're acting like the character's so strong, not getting hit should be considered a win. Yeah. Right? A lot of characters have good options against Demon Flip, right? Mm. You gotta know what your option is. Some characters' options aren't that great, I'll admit it. Mm. Like, I don't see every dragon off doing back free when I jump. Back free hits me from... I, I encourage anyone to test it. Backdash three times, j do the short Demon Flip, and do... Do back free with Dragonov. You'll hit me. You can even hit me from further than that. Mm. Uh, Asuka can do uh, free. Free is very good. Right? Yeah, it has a high what vertical do... hitbox, I think. Yeah. 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 She can do forward one plus two as well, which is really good. Mm. Right? A lot of characters have options you might not have tried. Mm. And again, the safest option: sidestep and block. Uh, an option I've. I, I need to test out more that I've heard is sidestep and jab. If you're, mm. That's probably a bit dangerous because you can get counter hit if you're mm. not fast enough. Mm. But in theory, I, I always say it being... Uh, you getting punished for messing up shouldn't be a reason for you not to try something. Yeah. If it works, do that. If you mess up, that's on you. That's not the method. Yes, so sidestep and jab should be is apparently the best option. Hmm. But yeah. Are there any are there any for your option anyway? Um are there any characters in particular that you um I don't know I can't really sp I, obviously you can't speak for other players, but maybe you can speak for yourself. Like are there any particular matchups you struggle with uh when you're playing Akuma? In uh yeah, J Jack is a uh, very annoying to fight. Because you, you you don't have an aerial basically against Jack. 
Mm-hmm. Unless he's doing too many down back ones, but they they know that they're gonna get blown up for that, so they're yeah. careful. Yeah. Um, I've seen. The... Sorry, carry on. Sorry, carry on. Yeah, most of his moves will hit you out of the air. He can outrange you so well. He can whiff punish you so well. It's it's kind of hard to punish down for a two. You mm. can't step him very well. Mm. Jack's very hard. Uh, I haven't fought any amazing Ling, but I know Ling is very good against Akuma. She's got very good options. Like down three Ado, she can block the down three and AOP under the fireball. Really? I had no idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah like it's crazy. And her uh, anti air is very consistent and very good. Um, uh, I don't like Claudio as well. Yeah, I Very remember. I, I remember at one point. I don't know which tournament it was. Spag mentioned um, in all your sets with Joe Pelix, the Finnish player. Obviously, he's a cloud. You mean um, yeah. you 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 struggle to beat him most of the time. Um, so it's yeah. it's interesting to hear you say that. Um, uh, for me, for me personally, um, I play Jin and Miguel, and I prefer using Miguel. In that matchup, because I feel like his back one and his standing three are really good against Demon Flip. Uh, both of them obviously punish while standing two. I, I know while standing two is a move Akuma players like to cancel into Demon Flip with. Yeah. Both players, I mean, sorry, both moves punish those, punish while standing two if he doesn't cancel. Uh, but basically, what I like to do is force them to do the red fireball so that I can then sidestep and launch. See, someone yeah. who knows the matchup. Yeah. So <laughs> that's, so that's, that's, in my mind, I'm not saying it works every time. I'm not saying that's a foolproof way to beat Akuma. Obviously, eventually, yeah. it comes down to which player plays the other. But in my mind, whenever I play Akuma, that's that's usually what I look to do. It's like, I yeah, like that's, I'm that's I, a good thing to do. Like I, I I'm not gonna disrespect. I'm not gonna respect your demon flip. Like regardless of what you do, like I'm mm. like I wanna force the player to use it with the red fireball so I can get around that and launch. Um, yeah, exactly. But yeah. like I've been, I've been hearing an excuse that I don't understand. People saying, "Oh, Akuma's too strong because you have to guess, and you have to, f- and you have." People have said it's too strong because you have to think. Mm. Are you not thinking when you're playing <laughs> other character? You should be thinking against everyone. What yeah. are you doing? <laughs> I'm forcing you to think. But who do you play normally? <laughs> Just, 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 just playing on autopilot against all the other characters, but now nah, Akuma really yeah. makes you think. Um, yeah, I, I, was, I, I had a really good uh, debate on Twitter yesterday with uh, Alpha. He's a French Warren player. He's very good. Mm. He got to grand finals against uh, JDCR in a tournament in Canada recently. Mm. Like, he's really good. He beats speed kicks, whatever. Oh, uh, Alpha. L A L F A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. we were talking, and I was saying, what uh, a lot of characters that are called cheap, they're often not as cheap as people think. Mm. And it's just, they're very good at beating, inex- at exploiting inexperienced players. Mm. Like Steve, like if you don't know to be careful for back one, he'll blow you up. That doesn't Everything mean back one is, broken, is yeah. like broken and everything, but... Players, like they're very, they're char- these characters are very good at beating you if you don't know what you're doing. It's easier to beat a, someone who doesn't know what they're doing with these characters than it is with another. Yeah. But once they know, the move that can lose its cheapness. Mm. Sometimes the move is just cheap. Akuma's down two. That's mad cheap. Like, yeah. I'm not defending down two, right? <laughs> but like... A lot of the down threes that I've hit in tournaments, I know that they could have dodged it. They could have. Mm. They just don't have the experience to not get hit. Yeah. So, for example, back one, same. Down four, two, same. Yeah, yeah. So, mm. with that in mind, then, obviously, recently a lot of top players um, around mm. the world have been putting Akuma like in, in towards the top of their tier list, like in their top five. I know. Um, we have our own community tier list, and we put it out on Twitter, and Akuma was, uh, I can't remember if it's S or A+, plus, and people got really mad, like, this is the worst tier list, blah, 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 blah. But it's like, it's, everyone has their own opinion, but we're not going to get into yeah. that. Um, so overall, do you think Akuma is extremely, well, I would assume, like, you're gonna, uh, is, is it just a matter of time before people just get used to the matchup, or is the character just, like, nice. is it, it's too strong? 
uh, well, the character, like I said, he might be the best in the game, but pe but people also don't know the matchup. It's a mix of both. Mm. That's interesting. Um, so move yeah, on to so, so, yeah, they don't know the matchup, and he's he might be the best. And it's weird. It's 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 weird. weird to, it's weird. It's weird. It's weird to say that about like top players like a lot of the Koreans, Rang Chun Ni, blah blah blah, blah all struggling against the Kuma. It's weird to think that players of that level wouldn't have experience against that matchup. But I yeah. guess because um... I'll tell you, I, I played uh, I played Ni in Vegas. It was just the first to two, right? Yeah. But I played him right after playing Arslan. Uh -huh. You could tell Ni wasn't familiar with. Him. You could okay. tell. But when I play Lohai, who's played me a lot and has trained to beat me, yeah, yes. you can you can tell who knows the matchup between the two of them. Mm. And and Ni when he played against me and when he played against Awais in uh, Malaysia, I think it was, mm. he wasn't playing the matchup properly. Mm. I, I, was that the one where he tried Marduk and then switched to Kazuya and yeah, just like, a bunch of different you, characters? If you yeah. know the common matchup, you would also know not to try Marduk. <laughs> <laughs> If you want a counter pick, that is like one of the worst choices. Marduk is not good against Akuma. Okay, that's that's pretty interesting. It's it's just weird to think about for me that players, the players of that level still would struggle against certain matchups. But we'll... If not, if no one plays the character, who are you gonna learn from? That's yeah. the problem. That's true as well. Yeah, I guess there there aren't really that many really good Akuma players in 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 Korea, and they're coming out of. All these other regions and they're struggling with it which makes sense yeah. um so well, i'm gonna move on to another thing that's uh, been a talking point um in the tekken community in in, in like the past week obviously uh, the talking uh, the tokyo tekken masters they revealed the extended practice functionality we saw the in-game frame data the punishment training uh, both of those coming to the series for the first time people have been asking about yeah. that for the longest time um, and the return of replays, but better than they were in previous games. Um, what, what are your thoughts in general on these new features? Like, do you think they're going to be Amazing. useful for players or, at all levels or just beginners? All levels. Mm. I, have, I, I have players in my community, in my local scene, right, that still don't really know how to punish and they don't like going into training mode to actually learn all the stuff because it's kind of boring yeah if if the training mode is more geared towards a more fun experience of learning mm. it it should incentivize people to actually practice yeah instead of saying they practice yeah yeah that makes and a lot so of sense that's great um and uh also people just don't know like there's a lot of um, videos and content, and you can look up how to punish things. Yeah. But if the game actually, t if it's in the game and you don't have to look outside of it, that's mm. much better. Because not everyone's going to do research to learn the game. They just yeah, want to yeah. play the and assume the game can teach itself to you, like any other game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And of course, so like... It's great for everyone. Yeah, and of course, if you want to improve, like ultimately it's down to you, whether you want to put in that work. Um, it's why... We've had thousands and thousands of great players like before these features came out, like they put in the work. So even if the features are in the game, ultimately it's down to the player to make use of them. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what what do you think about um, charging for that frame date? Obviously, it's part of the uh, season pass three, but Michael Murray said uh, it's probably likely gonna be like three or four dollars. Like, is yeah. is it something you is it something you're is it something that bothers you, or is it something like, it like uh, is it is I'm, it whatever? There's two schools of thought on it, and I'm part of the one that says they didn't have to do it. They put work, they added resources, mm. they did this for us, and they didn't like withhold it. Mm. It's just added to the game, right? Yeah. You pay for the work. It's that easy. Because yeah. there are some shady DLC practices, right? Like, DLC that's already on your disc that you have to pay for. Mm. That I disagree with. Mm. But if they put if they put some extra work in the game, especially when they listen to the community for that work and then just think of something else to make you pay for, mm. I think it's fair to pay for it. 
And I, I'll be honest, I, at this point, I would just give Arada my credit card and say, buy whatever you want. Like, <laughs> but still, on principle, it's a, you should have to pay for extra work. Yeah. But for everything's Tekken done, Tekken's done in my life, I'd buy any content. Yeah, and I think a lot of people but would this as well, content, yeah. yeah, but this content should be should be something you paid for it's like i've like the, the legacy characters they go oh i'm not paying for that i complained that i complained for six months and now it's in the game but i have to pay for it like it should already be in the game no nothing should or shouldn't be in the game the game yeah, yeah, is yeah. how it, how it's made yeah um yeah so um is it something are these features something you hope obviously a lot of people have been some people have been saying yeah it's fine but as long as they add it in the next games as as like from the like from the word go like Tekken 8 or whatever game it may be mm -hmm. um like as long as they they have that in the game from the start it's going to be fine like is that is that something you agree with or like does I it don't matter? Thought, yeah. I, I hadn't thought of that but I guess that would be fine yeah that's a, that's a fine way to think I don't I don't mind that but like I know that sort of the Arada and Mari and the team didn't really want to put frame data in the game and they actually had to think about it and in the end they just said okay we'll do it right yeah but they said when a game's been out for so long it's fine to give you that tool mm. but I think that what they believe is uh doing the homework yourself is part of the experience of learning the game yeah but frame data it in the game is kind of spoon feeding you compared to to old standards. Yeah. I think it should be in the game from the get go, right? Mm. But I also understand that it it used to be part of the experience to go find out. Mm. That's sort but of as, the adventure of it, yeah. Yeah, but as a competitive player who just needs to get better quicker and more efficiently, yeah, I want that in, in the game. Yeah, and, and it makes sense. Like it's mm. it's for some pe some people, I guess it's disappointing that it wasn't the game from the start. But like, like it is what it is. Like, what can you do? Like, this is the way things are. And yeah. like three three four dollars isn't much. That's like one lunch, maybe two if you live in Kenya. Um, so like mm. it, it, it's for me personally, anyway. It's it's not that big a deal. Like it, I have the season pass anyway, so it's like. It's, it's whatever like there's there's the games the game's doing well the community is growing the, the the devs have done so much for the game already so I'm, I'm not really bothered you know that's that's me personally anyway um so uh final question before uh we end this uh something i've asked all the other guys i've interviewed uh i asked i asked this to uh to ryan hart in the previous episode of this series he said uh, he doesn't have a top five because everyone has their own opinion. Like, who who's your top five characters in Tekken Seven? As an, uh, and it's interesting to hear from you as an Akuma player. Yeah, uh, well, Akuma. Mm -hmm. uh, Dragonov. Uh, the season three. It hasn't been enough really to to make a good top five. But yeah, maybe Claudio, maybe. I really rate Claudio higher than most people, but I keep losing to Claudio. We we actually do in this community as well. Like Claud, mm. that sidestep four in season three is yeah. so ridiculous, like, and it's like a legit like, mix-up now. Yeah. Like for me, he was underrated in season two, mm. and they buffed everything in season three. Mm. So yeah, he, he might be top five. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So Akuma, Claudio, Dragunov. Uh, Mm -hmm. I think Kasumi's probably still top five. Okay. Uh, and then uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe geese. Maybe, oh, maybe Brian or geese. Yeah, Brian or geese. Brian or geese. Interesting. Yeah, because they fixed a lot of Brian's issues. Mm -hmm. But geese now his fundamentals aren't strong, but he just hits you one. And you, they made him like a his uh, damage is ridiculous in season three. They made him yeah. like a shit season one Akuma. <laughs> like, like he struggles to hit you, but if he hits you, you die. Yeah, especially that so... deadly rave buff. Like every time, every yeah. time I'm in rage, like it's it's like it's death. 
If Geese hits like, you, now he's, he's got full life, and I'm like, yeah, he's dead. Yeah. <laughs> like, even as a meme, right? He just did the Rage Art to full life. Yeah, he's yeah. gonna die. He's gonna die, Ra yeah. Rage, yeah, too much damage. But if I want to stay in something more well-rounded, mm -hmm. Brian. Okay. Because they fixed, like I said, they fixed a lot of his issues, and now he's very strong. But I haven't seen enough Season 3, and also, as crazy as they balanced it, I think overall, my thoughts on Season 3 is it's, it's much more balanced than Season 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. But there was a few characters left out. I think some of the low tier is really low, but if you get above that, everything's about the same. Mm -hmm. right? Who would you say and those characters they... are then? Uh, what... Lily wasn't strong and they made her worse. Gigas wasn't strong and they didn't do anything about it. Eliza, definitely. Uh, no, no, Eliza's all right. Eliza's a mid tier, mid tier. Okay. But it's ve she's very hard to play. Not everyone can make her look good. Mm, that's true, yeah. Yeah, she, she's mid, mid, very mid. But yeah, hey. Lily, I think, is low tier in this season. Uh, Gigas. They nerfed bears. Uh, who else? Who else? Oh, I can't think. Anna? No, they made Anna better, actually, in season three. But they made her better, but... but she's she, still, she, she she still, pre <laughs> she's still pretty bad, yeah. It's true. Yeah, you know what? Anna, Anna's like Eliza. She's, she's mid. Yeah. But yeah, the thing is, being mid-tier in a game where... Well, like they they made Josie really strong this season. I've mm. I, I've always thought she was kind of weak, right? Season one and two, because mm -hmm. she was like, yeah, she's got thirteen frame punishes and she's got all that, but she does no damage. Mm. I don't care. She can punish me nine times. I'll hit her twice and I'll win. Right? <laughs> but now yeah. that now she she's very strong. yeah, she has all the stick counter tools and with that. Everyone's got better wall carry now. There's, what, there's like 50 characters in the game, something like that. Almost 50, yeah. yeah. I'd say about 10 of, 10, 50, 10 of them are, like, are, are really low for some reason. Mm -hmm. and, but everyone else is mad. Mm. Like, and it, it's very balanced. Yeah, and in any case, like, it's, it's, Tekken's one of those games where, like, um, obviously, everyone has their own opinion, but like you can pretty much win with anyone. Rangchi won World oh, Finals with, with with Panda last year. Um, so, what I like to tell people is like, like just play the game, especially new players. Just play you ha who you have fun with, and then worry about the less the rest later. Yeah. Because, yeah. When I say there's a big hole in the in the in the lower ranks, it's it's a big hole compared to season one and two which were quite well balanced. Mm. If you compare them to like older game, no, the, the game is still very well balanced, even with that hole. Yeah. Like, there's games where you can play three characters and everyone else trash. Yeah. Like, yeah. Tekken is clearly not one of those. Yeah, and it's, and it's really good for the scene. Like, it's always nice to see like diverse top mm. eight. I'm a musician playing Yoshimitsu in top eight. And all that sort of Kane and Trench at, at Berlin Tech yeah. and Clash. Like, it's always nice. It's 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 never nice to see the same characters in top eight again and again and again. Um, so that's yeah, that, that's what I like about the game anyway. Yeah. And that's what I like about the European scene as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. We have a, since we have a lot of players that overlap in level. Mm. You never know who's going to be in top eight. Mm. You could see Miguel, Noctis, Yoshi. Hey, you're going to see Samakuma now some yeah. point like yeah. you can see tishimon with raven or marduk sometimes yeah asim's playing a kasumi but we don't have a lot of kasumis so it's nice you might there, there could be a steve in there yeah it's, hey, it's... With that di dinosaur versus fighting came out of nowhere and did, i think fifth or something the brian, brian. Player, yeah 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 like you never know yeah it's it, and it's fun to watch like and and it's when great. yeah and when you main one of those characters, you always you, you always cheer the one is like, yeah, my character's in top eight, and all, and all that sort of stuff. And yeah. um, I remember uh, Ryan Hart saying something like, um, like everyone has their own perspective to the game. Like you never know, like what you can do um, with your own approach to the game. Like you can, 
basically you went with anyone and like in in summary yeah yeah um so yeah uh that's gonna be it basically uh once again uh thank you so much for taking the time you you probably uh, have a lot of other shit to do uh, as i said earlier uh <laughs> like just like nah uh, but i know you have takra cup coming up i'm sure everyone's looking forward to that um and yeah um all i can say is thanks again um we hope everyone enjoyed it on the stream um as usual uh this will be going up on youtube and after reports uh this time next week so yeah if you missed it uh, you'll have checked it out and all that stuff so yeah uh thanks again so much uh for taking the time yeah. and and all the best thanks for having me thanks for having me it was fun all right cheers man all right so that was super kuma hopefully you guys um enjoyed um the interview took in what he had to say and uh yeah that's pretty much going to be it uh, thanks for joining uh freon thank you very much for the follow um and nothing else to say at this point uh, we'll see you guys on friday for iron fest friday as usual and uh whoever the next guest will be next month so uh take care have a good one and uh, we'll see you next time peace